Well, hello, everybody. I hope you guys all had a great Thursday. It feels a little different doing it on a Thursday instead of a Wednesday, but it was really nice to have a Wednesday night off and watch Aaron Jemison do one of his live streams. That was a lot of fun. Um, and he did announce that he's going to be starting another channel, but I'll let him elaborate on that. Maybe the Saturday. Catch that one, Aaron. <laughs> I want to thank everyone for being here. I am ridiculously excited. Like my stomach's got butterflies. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me say hello to everybody here today. So first one in the house was Wanna Wander. Hello, hello. Erin Jennison, thank you so much for always being a wonderful support. It's always greatly appreciated. Bob's Adventure, hello, Thrifty Angela, it's so good to see you here. California Travel Videos, hey Grace, Grace, loved your cameo on your latest video, you guys need to go watch that, it is so funny. Morris Family Adventures, hello my brother, I love you. Let's see who else is here, Megan, Going Green Mom, hello, hello, so good to see you. TV2 Live. Nice to see you here, another member. Van Life Rocks, Ray, thank you for being here. You're always so supportive as well. Traveling Granny, Tracy, wonderful to see you. Rob on the road. We've got Butter Beanhead, and I said it right this time. I don't know why I always get tripped up on that. That's so weird to me. Prairie Life, hello, hello. If anyone doesn't remember, she was parent student advocate before, but Karen has changed her channel to Prairie Life and she's gonna do a Prairie, Canadian Prairie perspective and it's gonna be so exciting, you guys. So if you don't have her, definitely go check it out. Before I finish going through everyone else that's here, I want to ask all my members and moderators to drop their link and please remember that you just need to put exclamation mark and then your channel name with no capitals, no spaces, and it will drop your link. If I have my settings correct. We all know that can be a challenge for me sometimes. <laughs> Jovan, it's so good to see you. So good to see you. Stinky banana. Oh, look at this, my stream elements, one of my other options I put on there is working. So Dancing Critter Acres, thank you so much for joining our family. Great to see you here. Lucy, Lucy, so wonderful to see you. Buckeye Kitty, hello. Linda R, oh my goodness, we have lots of people in here. This is awesome. Fatima, wonderful to see you. You've been waiting for this moment, me too. I am just so blessed to have this opportunity today. Kathleen, hello. Camping with Clammy, good to see you. Haven't seen you around for a while, Corey. Did I miss anybody? I'm always behind in the chat. Jenny O'Brien, thank you for coming in. Lots of talking amongst the family in here. Auntie Cindy, love you, love you. Thank you for being here. Cabin Dweller, nice to see you as well. Our Destinations and Creations. I just want to show everyone I got some jewelry today from our desk. Isn't it cute? So pretty, pretty. So I made sure that I wore De uh, Rhonda for this very special interview. Thank you, thank you. Badge, hello, hello. Really, you left blind views for me. I know, I know, because he does his Thursday Thursdays right now. Thank you so much, Batch. <laughs> uh, hello. Yeah, no, we're not going to Hawaii yet, but uh, you keep those fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. My goodness. 31 in the house, you guys. That's fantastic. TGIF, hello, hello. Good to see you. Thank you, Ardez. It's because you made it special for me. So if you guys are interested in some jewelry, go check it out. Let her know. Although, Rhonda, I can't believe how much you paid for shipping. It showed it on there. I was shocked at how much that cost to ship. All right. Okay. Oh, thank you so much for that, Morris Family Adventures. Greatly appreciated. Greatly appreciated. Okay. 
we're here for one reason only. You're not here to listen to me today. I'm not even here to listen to me. I am here to learn as much as I possibly can from Dee today. So let's just take a moment and bring her out. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. good. I'm really good. Are we having any I've been, issue? Not yet. Okay, good. good, I, good, heard, good. I heard a little bit when I was listening to you backstage, but I don't hear it right now. I've been sick this past week. I'm finally feeling really good. And I went and had the test to see if I had that awful C word. Oh. And I, I didn't. I was neg negative. So if anybody in the chat was worried about me, quit worrying. I had a two-day flu. And i just been tired for a few days after that. But I'm doing really well. Well, that's really so. good to hear, Dee. Thanks for letting everybody know so they don't worry. Um. Yeah. yeah, I'm I am like so honored that you are on my live stream. I I'm just I'm awestruck. It's like I'm meeting a movie star. I hope it doesn't match you up. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden I won't be able to speak English anymore. <laughs> well, how long ago did you even start your channel D? A little over a year ago, a year ago in September. So you're, I looked before we started, you're sitting at 9.8 thousand, like 200 shy of that 10,000. Right, thousand. right. In a year. Yep. And I haven't moved any subscribers in the last two weeks. <laughs> I go up and down. I get over, over it a little bit go right back down you know how that works with youtube yeah you know you gain 10 and lose four and then you gain 13 and lose 10 you know just back and forth so That's you, it you started your channel after bob wells interviewed you right yeah i had been doing videos for bob wells once a year for four years Okay. And in May of this last year, he put out, put out the fourth video. And I started my YouTube channel just be, let's see, when I do it. I can remember just like in September before that. So mm -hmm. I, I did a video tour with him in January. And I did an interview of Bob Wells on my channel at that same time. So How yeah. Did that feel cuz he's a pretty big name in the van life community. Yeah. It felt weird actually. <laughs> Very weird to turn the tables, you know. He's he had always interviewed me, which he did again. But to interview him, I'm a terrible interviewer. <laughs> I mean, I really am. I don't feel like I do very good interviews. Well, that's why I stopped doing a lot of interviews on my channel. I don't feel I have the talent that you have, Paula. Oh. You're very talented. Oh. You put everybody at ease. You relax everybody. They open up. They say things they might not say on somebody else's channel. Thank because you. you make them feel so relaxed. What well, that is why I decided I would do an in interview with you. Because you know I get nervous. When I get nervous, I stumble all over my words a lot. Mm -hmm. And I knew that doing the interview with you would make it a lot easier for me. I've done some interviews on other channels, but I didn't feel as comfortable with I didn't, I felt, I don't know. Anyhow, I really love the way you do interviews. I love the way you bring out a lot of information about the people that you interview that can help the community. Oh, So that's why I decided to do it. I mean, I don't know. You're going to make me blush. <laughs> I'm going to need my fan to cool myself down. <laughs> so I'm not sure if you're, frozen but it looks frozen to me can you still hear me okay a little bit 
a little bit of echo, echo, but okay. I don't know why. There you're back again. There you're back. Yeah. So, you know, there's so many things about you, Dee, that I could cover. I mean, you are the definition of survivor, right? Life throws yeah. so yes. much at a person. And I was watching one of your videos that um, you had talked a little bit about who you are and and how yeah. you survived. Do you want to share with everyone, like, well, like, what are your tips for me, D, to to manage? Hopefully, she'll come back. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is the thing where D is. The Wi-Fi is really difficult to manage, and out there in the evenings, it's even more difficult for people to have service. So she will be right back. And this could happen every now and again. That's just the way real life works sometimes. So I was asking you, what advice would you give us me for, for my next 30, 40 years to learn to deal with life's challenges? Sorry about that. I had a feeling I've been having a lot of problems with losing my internet in the mm -hmm. middle of, in the middle of my live streams. So Bear with me, people, and bear with me, Paula. Oh, if yeah. it doesn't go well, I, you know, I, I don't know what to say. That's all. <laughs> that's how van life works, right? I guess I need to invest three hundred dollars in a wee boost, but I can't. I spent so much money the last month, and then and, and on. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna go back and forth here. <laughs> So okay. you just made a really cool purchase today, didn't you? Say it again, please. You did some shopping today? Shopping. You know what? Maybe I could turn on YouTube on my phone, then I okay. won't miss it. All right, we'll try that. I'm going to try it because the phone and the laptop is different, so maybe it's... Maybe it'll work. We'll mm -hmm. see. Can't hurt to try. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you're you're living the real life. This is just how it goes. That's one thing I have to make sure you guys, when I get out on the road, I have to invest in stuff to help with my service. Right now it's easy. Yeah, because you know, my phone works great. I can do pretty much anything with it. I can upload videos like that. No problem. But then <laughs> when it comes to doing the live streams with StreamYard, mm -hmm. StreamYard, it must take too much bandwidth is all I can think. And yeah. so what happens is when I use the StreamYard, it kills my internet. <laughs> yeah, that happens see, to I a can, lot of people. I can see it on my phone, but it doesn't want to finish loading. Okay, I can hear you a little bit, but you're echoing pretty harshly. I hope, I hope this doesn't go this way for your whole live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you wasted your time bringing me up. <laughs> no, you know what we would do, D? We would just do a private recorded one earlier in the day when the bandwidth is better out there. And then put that one up then. All right. Well... She'll probably be right back. See, and I know a lot of channels that I watch that people are out there in the desert and they have this mostly at night. Well, hello, good looking. Can you hear me? Here we go again. <laughs> well, I'm back. You're back. <laughs> I'm back for three minutes. <laughs> okay can you hear me right now yes okay yes. so i'm gonna ask you what are some life lessons that you would teach me what are things you would want me or no. anyone in the chat to know to help life <gasps> be a little bit easier life lessons i don't know 
See, I'm terrible. <laughs> life lessons. I've learned so much over my life. I don't want, I guess I would say that even in, when you're facing troubles, maybe, you know, in, it doesn't go on forever. This day will end and tomorrow will come. Okay. Tomorrow's a new day. No matter what we went through today, no matter what we think we screwed up on, tomorrow's a new day. We can change things tomorrow. I don't know. That's one thing I've learned through life. It's nothing is permanent. Memory, memories are permanent, but sir, our situations change every single day. Uh, I don't know if that in in one is of your what videos you, you talked a lot about adapting to change. You need to learn to adapt. That's what life is. It's change. Right. Well, even as a child, I learned to deal with change. I guess because we moved all the time. We never stayed in one place for the more than a month or two at a time. Never. Mm -hmm. So I learned to love the change, actually. And that's part of why I'm a nomad, because it, it is in my blood. I, I do adapt to change. I don't let things... Hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm really being clear, but... Oh, yes. You know, I mean... I'm terrible. I'm sorry. No, you're good. You're good. I think just a little bit of technical glitches threw us off just a little bit, but we'll shake it off and adapt, right? It's a technical issue. So if I can really hear questions, then it's hard, hard to respond to them. Mm -hmm. I do see a question in the chat. Somebody okay. asked me if I ever traveled to Canada. And if not, will you one day? I have been to Canada. Oh, did you hear that? She's been to Canada. I wonder if she's been anywhere near me. And Russ with RBR TV, that is not a green screen. I'm just sitting in a different spot in my living room. <laughs> so yeah, my green screen does not work on here. I kept trying, I don't know what it is. I gotta get a different background or something, but for the life of me, I cannot get a green screen or a blue screen to work. I do believe that we may have to do this another time as well. She's just getting some service back. She's just trying to pop back in. She's in the virtual green room right now. Everybody calls it the basement, don't they? There we go. Hello. <laughs> I guess this is going to keep happening. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes I have Sometimes I have fantastic internet. Sometimes I don't. I'm not, I'm only about 10 miles from the cell tower, the main cell tower. The problem I think is I'm in Quartzsite and Quartzsite is very crowded right now. Mm -hmm. And the more people that, that come here and use that cell tower, the worse the internet gets. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's where the problem lies. For because sure. I had great internet everywhere I've been, except here. <laughs> so, because we want to keep this an hour, I want, I guess I'll get more to the point on some stuff. I know you've had a lot of challenges, but where have you found your strength, D? How have you been I have a survivor? A, I have a suggestion for you. If you, right. oops, hang on. Wow. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> That sounds like me. Now it's on the phone. <laughs> now it's on the phone if I can turn the phone. But I want to hear what you said. Okay, let's close that. And said, Did you want to try what the I'm gonna say. from your phone? I want to try, try, should try to come up on the phone. But okay. if you put the link in the chat. In the private chat? Okay. I am copying it. I'm going to paste it in. Oh, I'll put it in the regular chat for just D. 
So she'll go on her phone, she will find this. And because there is a lag between what I am doing on StreamYard and when it's shown on YouTube, it's just gonna take a couple minutes um, for that gap to, to fill space so that she can get back up here. I have a feeling the phone is really gonna be the, the really good option here for the both of us. In the meantime, who else is here? Everyone in Quartzite, get off the net. That's right, Jill. <laughs> Russ, you're using all the internet up. That's crazy. Nice hat hanging up there. What hat are you talking about? I don't, I'm looking in my background and I do not see a hat, DJ. You're funny. Lisa Lisa's is here. The Air Force guy, RB Reviews and More is here. Wow or a new housekeeper. I don't have a green screen or a new housekeeper. I have a new camera. That might make a difference. I'm sitting in a different spot and it did my lighting a little bit different, Russ. You silly, silly guy. Northwoods RV Life is here. Thank you guys so much for coming in. Dale Betts, thank you for being here. Destinations Delight. Oh my goodness, a whole bunch of you came in here already. That's awesome. Kenneth Oaks is here. Hello, Kenneth. Which channel is rating me, Kenneth? How long is Steve been living in the van life? That's a good question. And we will find out when she can get back up here. I'm just going to drop the link again because the chat's moving and I don't want her to miss it. Oh, I think she got it. Yay. Oh, the hat and box van D's. Okay. Well, I have a good feeling this is going to work. You got to turn your volume okay, back on there, again. On, let me check with the audio. Default echo canceling. Wonder if that's probably could cause a problem. I okay, can tell you. me if you can. You can hear me. Yeah. I can hear you very well. You this is great. I still have the echo. Still have the echo. Speaker phone. Let's try that. Well, I'll just have you talk more and then you won't hear me echo. Let's, uh, not T, where have you been in Canada? I'm sorry, what? Where in Canada have you been? Paula, do you know what? I apologize. I really thought this could work, but I don't think it's going to work. I can't hear a word you said saying unless you type the chat question in the private chat on the laptop, then okay, at least I, I could see what's going on. And if just talk to people while you're doing. Well, I just popped a question. <laughs> I just popped a question in the private chat. Oh, this is funny, actually. I feel bad for you guys, because I know you guys are excited to see her, too. Sounds good there in Florida. Okay. Oh, it's a Destinations Delight raid. How wonderful. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So I would, while we're um, waiting to see if she can come back, can everybody that can drop their link, please do so. So all the channel members and my moderators, please drop your link in the chat. And like Aaron Jemison always says, if you see someone in the chat that you don't know, go check them out. You might make a new friend. Because that's kind of what we're all about in this community is supporting one another, right? is popping the question. What do you mean I'm popping the question? I'm not asking anyone to marry me. I'm confused. Well, hello, hello. Nice to see another new person in here. Ah, I love meeting new people. You guys are all so great. Did I? Where am I in this chat? 
Way down, down, down. All right. Jovan, you need to put your name in. So you go exclamation mark, Jovan, all small letters, no spaces. I don't have it programmed to drop my link, but thank you for trying. <laughs> Going green moms work. That's good. I see Aaron did all the moderators as well. Don't forget to smash those likes. Thanks, you guys. Greatly appreciated. You know what? I will definitely arrange another um, opportunity to get together with her. We'll see if this one works this time. You're back on the laptop? Yes. Yes. I yes, I am. If you, if you type your questions in the private chat, maybe I can answer them. I'm not okay. sure why I can't seem to. There's I know that sounds terrible, right now. but there is a question in the private chat. Where have you been in Canada? Where have I been in Canada? Mm -hmm. Okay, I went to Victoria, Canada. Actually, my sister lives up, my oldest sister lives in Washington. One year, quite a few years ago, we did just Wanted to go to Bouchard Gardens. So my sister and I took the ferry over from, I think, Portstown, somewhere, maybe Port Townsend or something like that. Anyhow, we took the ferry across and went to Victoria. We went to almost every museum there. And then uh, we did the double Dutch bus and the Bouchard Gardens. We were both in wheelchair scooters at the time. I had been oh. in a wheelchair for five years. Oh. And we both did that. And uh, so then another time, a couple of years later, later, we wanted to go back. So we took my car across on the ferry. And we drove down the coastline of Canada. And went to uh, saw some different bed and breakfasts and all the little towns and shops along the shore. It was probably the most fantastic trip of my life ever, as far as going somewhere. That was the first time I was ever out. The only other place I've been outside of the United States is in Mexico when I did the Mexican Riviera. She popped out. You know what, you guys? I The first longer trip I ever took was to Vancouver Island as well. And my son was seven years old. It was the two of us. I just had a teeny tiny car. And we drove all the way to the island. And we that was the best holiday we ever had was out on the island as well. And in the mountains, I felt yes. like I was closer to God. It was like a spiritual experience to be there. Sorry, lost again. I think I don't think it's gonna go today. I think what we might need to do is uh, record a private chat uh, stream, do a premiere or something. I don't know. Where do I find my strength? Okay, let me say, I find my strength in my faith. My faith in God. That's where I get my strength. Everything comes from him. I give God all the glory for my life. I have been through so much in my life. And I could never have gone through it without my faith. I don't know what people, other people hold on to. People believe in different things. Um, one thing my mother gave me is a belief in God and his son, Jesus Christ. So I'm, I'm not a real religious. But she definitely has faith. And for all the things that Dia survived, her faith has definitely kept her going. I think that's one of the reasons that all of us connect with her and everything that she puts out on her channel so much is that she's, she's so inspirational. And I think we're bringing her back. We're doing a little buffering, buffering. Hello. <laughs> well, this is testing a person's strength tonight. 
Uh, this is not going good. I'm sorry. <laughs> Check the chat, D. I have another question. <sighs> Poor D. Oh, D, we will we'll do it another time. It's good. We'll record it. I'll put you another message in here. So we can record one during the week. I don't know if she's going to get that. Okay, you guys, I feel really bad. But you know what? That's just how it rolls sometimes, right? I think we all know that there's difficulties like that. And I think at least with D and I, we, we have enough patience. We can giggle and laugh about it a little bit. And we'll just find a different way to approach it. And I think that's something that all of us learn to do as we age and we learn and we grow. We learn that some things don't work a certain way. We just need to sometimes stop and take breath and then find a new way to approach it. We will definitely have D back here again, for sure. And we will probably do it as a video and a premiere. Um, does anybody have any questions for me right now? I'm just scrolling to be here or to the chat. Yeah, I didn't realize D had been to Canada and anybody that's seen British Columbia, it is gorgeous. It is absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, she is authentic and inspirational, right? I was saying this when I had Nomadic Hippie up on, on here with me on, on Monday. Um, there's so many times that I watch Dee and I, I, I see her heart and it's like I feel her heart and that's where a person feels that connectedness. And look at her. She is such a trooper. She doesn't quit. She keeps on trucking. Look, you're back again. Yeah, we will definitely have to have a chat during a premiere, DJ. Can you hear me, D? I can hear you, yes. I'm just and going some to... reason, I, I can hear you, but I keep losing my internet. So I don't know what's going on there. Well, I think... Who's there? I think we could just simply get together during the day one day this week and do like you suggested record it and we then need to grow. we need to get together and do a different way this yeah this is not working for me so i think i still want to do it for you i do but um i think what i have to do is do a, a like a private recording Mm -hmm. with you and then you can put it up as an interview with me you know yeah yeah that sounds great so, thank you so much i apologize for your audience to your audience i really wanted to do this i think it would have gone very well but i'm just i can't really feel comfortable responding to not sure what people want to hear. I could talk about my life, I guess, for a few minutes, but I would still lose, lose the internet. Yeah. So I don't think that's going to help. So I apologize to you. I apologize to the audience. Please forgive me. I wanted to do this, but I just don't. It's not working, and it's really probably very irritating to people listening listening to it and um i don't know what to say that's all it's i can okay. say it's good we will do so it i'm again. gonna leave i will join the chat okay and um go from there okay, okay. if people want to ask me a question in the chat i will try to respond to it but i'll do the best i can okay Thank okay you. Thank you. Bye. Right. Love you, Paula. I'm sorry. Love you too. It's okay. She is such a sweetheart, you guys. She is. And you know, we will get a video done because she says we will. So we will. 
It'll be awesome. But what you guys could do now is put a bunch of questions in the chat about some of the things that you want to know about D and D's life. Um, I know some of the questions that I wanted to know is um, D is a stroke survivor and she appears to be doing very well for someone that survived a stroke. But I know that an injury to the brain very often is an invisible injury. With those that are stroke survivors, we can see weakness sometimes, um, the physical deficits we're aware of. But a lot of people aren't aware of the things that are in here that is different and a challenge. So one of the things I want to learn from Dee is how that stroke has really changed her lifestyle. And um, for anyone that's been following Dee, we're very well aware that she has survived so much in her life and that she is such a strong woman. And we will find out some of those things that she has done to survive. So if you guys wanna pop your questions in, yeah, she's there in the chat. Thank you so much, Dee. It meant the world to me. And you just kept trying and trying and trying. You're such a sweetheart. Oh, my goodness. That's right. Dee's awesome. Everybody loves Dee. Yes, Russ. She is a very nice lady. If you have not checked out her channel, you guys just take a moment now. Maybe my moderators could drop her link again. Um, go check out her channel. It's, it's a really good channel. And she has built out a box van herself, right? So she doesn't let anything get in her way. That's, I think that's why so many people are drawn to her, right? Yeah, she did great. Even though there's technical difficulties, she, she kept giving it her all. It is tough. You know, I did suspect that this would happen in the evening, especially at this time of year out there, because I have heard a lot of people talk about that problem. The hat with all the bling said love. She wears in some of her videos. I think that was the hat that was there. And somebody had made it for her. And it says love. <clears throat> oh, you never lost the ability to walk, D. Well, that's good to know. I am curious why you were in a wheelchair for five years. Uh, me, not knowing any better, assumed perhaps that that had happened when you had your stroke. Because I do know, I know a lot of stroke survivors um, do lose the ability to walk and through extensive therapy, they sometimes can make those gains. Uh, oh, it's getting cold out there tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Where'd you get the cowboy box van D? The shorts that D has been doing has, um, has a little cowboy in there. Oh, Blue Wave's wife made that hat for her. Well, that's good to know. So Dee's stroke affected her speech and caused numbness in her left arm. So when someone has a stroke and they have weakness in any of their attributes, if it's on the left side, any difficulties that she'll have will be on that left side. So as she gets fatigued, it'll exaggerate anything that she compensates for. So if she's really tired, balance might become an issue, right? Um, speech can become affected when a person's very tired. And many people that have strokes really need to learn to manage their energy because it's very easy to burn out. I'll tell you guys a little story that hopefully you, you'll find useful. I don't know if any of you have heard of the spoon theory. Have you ever, have you ever heard of that? Okay, so the spoon theory, if you want to Google it, is actually a story that a woman tells, and that woman has lupus. But in the story, she's trying to describe to her friend in a cafe what it's like to deal with the changes in her energy. So in the cafe, she grabs up 10 spoons from different tables, and I'm going to use my, my 10 fingers to represent those spoons. So she says, when I wake up in the morning before my injury, I'm going to take that off of there. Before the injury, I could get up in the morning, have breakfast, get dressed and ready, go start my day. You know, by, by lunch, I might have used one more out of my 10 units of energy. Now, now that she has the disability, it takes a unit of energy just to wake up. It takes another one to get out of bed. 
It might take two if there's physical challenges just to get dressed in the morning. And then there's getting up and eating breakfast. Already you haven't even gone anywhere or done anything more than what used to take only one unit of energy before your injury. Now it takes five. So by the time, you know, you visit with someone, um, you try to get a little bit of housework done, you make supper, you might only have one unit of energy left in the evening, if you're lucky. And you can borrow from tomorrow's 10 spoons, but what happens tomorrow? Tomorrow you're starting with nine, and you can borrow some more, and then you're starting with eight till the point you can't even get out of bed because you have burnt out all of that energy. So what we try to teach people is how to manage that energy. So you know if you have a busy day or a day like today when she's going to do an interview, she might have needed to do a few less things throughout the day to be able to have the energy that she had today on the interview. Um, and again, that's that invisible injury stuff. So when a person learns that some of these things are challenges and difficult, it gives a whole new appreciation for the things that she's overcome and the things that she does. This woman survived a stroke and built her box van twice, right? Um, I just... I find her the most incredible person ever. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody that has, you know, any kind of challenges like that, mental health, if, if you deal with depression and different aspects of that, it, it just takes that energy and it sucks it away. So we try to teach people to, to balance how much energy you're using in a day and to not try to burn out so if you know that you have christmas coming and you're meeting a bunch of family sometimes just even dealing with the noise can take a bunch of energy you might need to have a couple down days beforehand so you're starting with your full 10 for that day rest you can borrow some spoons sure not for me though i'm barely carrying my long <laughs> But it does make sense. And if you guys want a more elaborate explanation of that, you can just Google the spoon theory. But it fits for every kind of disability that there is. And again, it's something that the average person doesn't know. If you haven't experienced that, how would you know? She said, 50 spoons for that interview, right? <laughs> and then I sucked all the Wi-Fi out. <laughs> oh, thank you. So D, you were full-time in your wheelchair for five years. Wow. And I'm not sure why you were in there, but you must have had a lot of therapy to be able to walk after and let alone do everything that you do. Just to even still be able to drive after having a stroke is a miracle. It really is. Because there's so many things just even with peripheral vision that can be affected and have reason for the license to be removed. Wow, you guys. Thank you for that thumbs up. Hello, Sissy's Trini. Thank you so much for coming in. Yes, she is definitely someone that I would love to meet in person. So, Dee, if you're still there, how long have you been in your van? You were in a, she was in a car originally, and then eventually her van. That's right, Megan. The spoon theory works for most any chronic illness. It really does. And it's something so much of us take for granted because we're young and we're healthy. Oh, and thank you so much, Prairie Life. That was wonderful. Thank you, Karen. Van Life Voyages. Yes, you use your spoons all the time. It's hard. It's very hard. Yep. And you know what? There are so many people that don't understand it that think, oh, everybody's scamming this and they're just pulling the wool over someone else's eyes. And that's not what it is at all. And it's that kind of thinking that's unfair and it prevents people from living their life as fully as they can. Because like, okay, I have this disability or this challenge. If I go out, people are going to think I'm pretending or I'm faking and that's not how it is. So I think a lot of what we all need to learn is to just forget about what everybody else thinks because it's holding us back from living our very best life. Regardless of the challenges that we have, we still have gifts. We need to focus on the things that we still have and can still use and can still apply in our life. Yeah, D is definitely one of your inspirations. Yeah. 
She said she answered while she was in a wheelchair in the chat. I missed it, D. You know how it is, D. Of course, I don't have 200 people in my chat like you do. <laughs> uh, oh, here we go. I found a D. Thank you. Fibromyalgia. It hurts so much to do things, and you atrophied, and you ended up in the chair. Hmm. You know, and having had that and then a stroke after, I'm just even that much more amazed that you can do all the things that you do. Oh, yeah. And some people that um, <clears throat> deal with a stroke, um, it brings out some of the dementia-like um, issues that we have and it's worse for some others too. So some people think, oh, someone's experiencing dementia and they are, but it is caused from the stroke that they had. Yeah. Hello, Chasing America. Good to see you guys here. So D has been a nomad for five years and in that box van for about a year and a half. What a girl, what a girl. When's the last time you recalled a girl, D? <laughs> I like it when people call me a girl. Thank you, Megan, for dropping that link. That is something that I teach in my regular work. I haven't even told that story in forever. Yes, definitely look more into it. And you guys will see how it fits. And it's kind of funny when you work with certain people and you talk about theories, like I'll, I'll explain that to someone and I won't use my fingers. I'll, I'll say, let's grab 10 pens or let's grab 10 spoons from their kitchen cupboard and I have them hold it and I have them tell me, okay, how many spoons did it take you to get out of bed today? And we'll work it up until when I got to see them. How, how much energy did you use? So how much energy are you going to have left tonight? What are the things that you can do to get more spoons back? So, I mean, managing it is one thing. Having a nap will give you a spoon back. Eating healthy and taking care of yourself in that way can give you a spoon back. Staying hydrated is very, very important as well. So inspired by her. Oh, even the seams and clothing will cause pain with that. Wow. See, and that's something that I'm not aware of, right? Wow. It's, you know, and sometimes a person is sick and they might be a little grumpy. And we'll be like, oh, why is that person like that? Well, if you lived with some of the stuff that they had to on a regular basis, you'd be grumpy too. I'm just scrolling back to see if there's anything. I can't believe there's still 30 people here. Thank you guys so much for being here. I know you guys were all wanting the CD, but we will definitely have an interview for you guys. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I met, missed anything further back. I'm going to go scroll all the way down. You're a wonderful world of a girl. Thank you, Anthony. Greatly appreciated. Box Van D says, I'm like the princess in the pea because of the fibro and the neuropathy. So because of that sensitivity on the skin to everything, yeah, you feel like that story where there's a pea under the layers of mattresses and you can feel it. I could not imagine having to deal with that. Honestly, I couldn't. Do most people change vans units more often than people would change houses? That is a really good question, Megan, and I think sometimes they do. I think because it's a smaller space and we start with ideas of what we think we want, we always change it as we've adapted to a different lifestyle because you live a very different lifestyle in a house than when you move into a nomadic lifestyle, right? Um, sometimes it can be due to mechanical issues. Sometimes it's going to be like, yeah, I didn't need it as big as I thought or no, I need more space or the shower to not shower. All those things make a difference. I think if you even compared it to someone that lived in the sticks and bricks, how many times did they change homes versus vehicles anyways, whether they're living in it or not? I think vehicles are always changed out more often. And Dee says, as far as that goes, some people do change rigs often. She went from a car to a small cargo trailer and now to a box van, right? So she started where she was at. She started with what she had, what was available to her, and she made it work. Was it ideal? Absolutely not. That was probably the most difficult thing that Dee lived in. But as she got to move it up, she just probably appreciates her stuff a hell of a lot more than a lot of us do, right? That's one thing that 
that that is good that comes out of challenges is that appreciation for things. Yeah, having a rare disorder is a daily chore just to survive. Yeah. Uh, Megan, my biggest issue with my cats, you track a little bit of dirts and you feel every little bit. Yeah. Hmm. Do we have any more questions, comments, you guys? Things that I can ask Dee when I do the interview with her? I'm just scrolling back and forth, guys. Well, I do believe I'm going to wrap this up in nine minutes because that'll be the hour. Does anybody know um, who is live streaming after this? Yeah, Dee definitely built up as she went on. Yeah. Hello, Wandering Gypsy Vanner. Thank you for coming in. Oh, look at this. I didn't even remember I put that in my stream elements. But yeah, come on down on Saturday nights at 7. <laughs> oh my gosh. You want to know what her favorite book is? Okay. We're progressive. That's right. That is right. As a part-timer, I changed my box truck after almost every trip. <laughs> Uh, oh, you're funny, Dale. Joe's biggest issue is that his cats just don't respect him. Dang, life is tough, buddy. <laughs> well, this is a good question. Is Dee ever scared in her van? Chasing America, I think that's a very valid question. Dee, if, if you could answer that. Again, we, we can answer that in the interview, too. Going green, mom. That makes a lot of sense, Dee. I didn't mean it's a bad thing. I just get attached to space, it seems like. We do. You know, we grow up um, thinking we're supposed to ha have stuff, right? Especially when you grow up with less. I mean, I think th there's a lot of different things that Dee and I have in common, and I think maybe that's one of the reasons I feel so connected to her. But you grow up and you don't really have anything, and you think, oh, man, I got to have stuff. That's that's people that have made it in this world, they have things, right? And you work and work and work for these things and you still have no life. And I think sometimes just to be able to let go of some of that just takes so much pressure off ourselves. Wizard of Oz is Dee's favorite book. And no, she's never scared. No. D is very creative. What is your best tip for your interior, for people whom do not have a lot to invest? That's another really good question, Lisa. I do have a bunch of pictures, you guys. Should I show you the pictures of D? Should I show them the pictures of some of your masks? D has done so many different things over her lifetime and she's developed so many skills and I do have a series of pictures of some art that she has. Fatima likes the song she wrote for her viewers. Yeah, that was awesome. And if you guys want to go check out Dee's channel, you can go take a look at that too. So the only thing that does scare Dee is if she breaks down and she's alone and no one is around to help. Yeah, I think that would be scary for anyone, Dee, especially big vehicles like we have. I don't know if you have a, do you have a policy that would, tow you i know my vehicle won't be covered because it's too big and i'm almost wondering maybe it's the same with the box fan yep she plays guitar she sings she writes poems she does artwork yeah she does everything hello full-time dream thank you so much for coming in yes i can show the pictures okay you guys i want to share my screen and i'm going to show you guys some of Dee's artwork first i'm going to show you guys her box fan that is Dee's box van. And now I'm going to just slowly scroll through her pictures. I'm just adjusting this here. Wow, you guys, take a look at this. This is one of the masks that Dee makes. Now, I would, and I haven't asked her, but I would imagine there's a lot of therapeutic value to this process of making these things.
I want to know how you shape it like a person's face. Do you put it over people's faces? Oh, I like that one. There's just so many different versions of variations. You know what? It reminds me of those old ballroom masquerade. Oh, yeah, masquerade balls that you see on, on movies and stuff where you're wearing those masks. I just think that would be so much fun. And that has an ocean background. Ooh, I like the little fur stuff around the neck on that look. Well, look at that, seashells and everything, incorporating the things that are around you in nature, right, Dee? That is so awesome. Wait, I'm gonna scroll so I can see your comments as I'm showing this. His Way Homestead is going live after this, all right. Um, does someone wanna drop that link? Ah, <sighs> you have AAA but no money for repairs, so it's scary. Yeah, absolutely, D. Yeah, uh, definitely a mixed media artist. Do you plan on doing a mural or anything on the side of the van, D? Yes, this stuff is very therapeutic, D, and that is why, with the train of thought that I did have for our interview, I mean, you share so much with everyone about some of the trials and tribulations of your life. And we were going to touch on that a little bit, but um, artwork is, is so therapeutic, you guys, because it keeps you in this moment now. And I've said this before as well. When you look way off into the future, the things you absolutely cannot control, it stresses you out. And when you're constantly looking to the past, looking at the negative parts, you can't, you can't change that either. And that creates stress. But if you live right now, right in this moment, it is truly freeing. And so I feel like Dee has gotten a lot of that in, in doing this artwork that she loves to do. Yep, using all the stuff that's available. There's so many neat ones. Oh, look at that, it's a gladiator one. <laughs> I love these D. They are so awesome. Yeah, they are very pretty. You are very good at that, D. Beautiful art, D. Box Van D, year one. I was going to say so. You're definitely hella artsy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at this. That is just phenomenal, you guys. There's even like a, it's not like a doily, one of those things you crochet on there. Oh, that's cool. That's the two sides to my personality. <laughs> hey, D, this is fantastic. You can literally do this for any sports team. That is so cool. Hmm. Oh, okay, that's really nifty. <laughs> oh, and I'm back to other pictures. So D says that's what she was doing when when she got out of the wheelchair. That's so awesome. Hey, Renita, I love you. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. So what did you do, do with those masks, Steve? Because I mean, that's something you can't cart around everywhere you go. Did you sell them? Did you give them away? Yeah, they're definitely awesome. Art show kind of quality, very talented, yep. Um, Megan, can you drop, or Ray, could you drop the link for His Way Homestead? Because we are going to raid that channel in just a few seconds. I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. We will definitely get an uh, interview with Dee. She's awesome. And you guys are so awesome. There are still 35 people in here hanging out, even with the technical difficulties. So that is truly appreciated. You guys are what makes this all worthwhile. Um, if I'm just going to hang tight till we can get that link dropped. Till we can get that link dropped. That would be awesome. Of course, by the time I see it in StreamYard, it's probably already been sitting on the YouTube side. Aw, thank you, Bob. Thank you for putting on entertaining streams. Thank you. Oh, much love to you, Trisha. Thank you. And by the way, you guys, Trisha very kindly had been looking for a Patreon, which I do not have, and sent me a really nice PayPal tip. So thank you, Trisha. <laughs> You're a sweetheart. 
Thank you, Daryl. You sold very few, but gave away about 200. <laughs> oh, Dee, you're so sweet. So sweet. Oh, traveling granny, Tracy. Tracy, thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you guys. I really, really do. All right. Let's go do a Van Vita Travels raid to his way homestead. I'm going to shock him. <laughs> Thanks, Brian Davis Mayhem RV, you guys. Thanks so much for coming. Um, you probably didn't miss too much on the replay, but we are, so that you know, going to do an interview um, with Dee and, and record it and then put it out, just because the difficulty out of Quartzsite right now with the Wi-Fi in the evenings. So, But you know what, you guys? That's the reality of what the life is like. Um, definitely stuff that I know I have to learn before I'm on the road full time. He isn't live yet on your notifications. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Trisha. All right, you guys. Thanks so much. Much love to you all. And Saturday night, I'm going to use all my new fun stuff. Oh, wait. Hang on. Dee's coming back. Dee's coming back. Hi. Do you know you're back? Hey. <laughs> Sorry. I'm still live. Oh. Okay, hang on. I'm just going to. Put me down. Put huh? me down. Put me okay. down. All right. Thank you guys so much. And have a great day. Great evening. See you Saturday.